Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Illustration to start us out. Um, a couple weeks ago, um, we got a new coffee maker, if you didn't notice. You need to see the cool sign on there. Almost everyone can be able to see that sign. Coffee. Christ offers forgiveness for everyone everywhere. C-O-F-F-E-E. Right, under, right next to that is the new coffee maker. We're in the coffee maker. A few weeks have gone by. I've been drinking more coffee now than previous. Has anyone, can anyone tell? <laughs> you can? Okay, really? <laughs> oh, yeah, Marcy goes, yeah. Uh, I've been, I, I haven't drank coffee. Um, I was just telling Merlin Marilyn the other day, um, in college I took coffee one time for a test, a biology test, and... Um, I took enough coffee, I was up for two and a half days straight. I drank like a pot and a half of coffee. I didn't know how to drink coffee. And so, yeah, you're going, you're shaking. Yeah, duh, that was a rookie mistake. I was a freshman in college. I never had drank coffee before. I had coffee. I stayed away from it for the next 25 years. I, and, and within 20, that, all those years, maybe 10 cups of coffee throughout my life. Well, I came here, I started drinking coffee. And then we got a new Keurig at home, and now we got this new one. So I went from one cup a day to probably about three to four cups a day. I'm getting a lot of work done lately. <laughs> so we're checking the machine out. It's not working. I, Shirley, come here. And I went to pull back the lever. And it's not working. Shirley, get out of here. I need some coffee. I intentionally didn't have a cup of coffee at home because I go, I'm going to have some coffee at work or at church. So I go over there, and, I, and it doesn't work. So she comes. She fiddles with it and opens it up, and we can't get the water even. She pushes the water button, can't get the water. Okay, so you can't get the water. So then there's a, there's a, a buttons on there that says off, cleanse, run. And the button on this side, and then there's another one on this side that has three names on it. And there's two... Uh, two stacks of uh, uh, coffee boxes. So you've got one on the other side. Well, we stopped using it. Well, for whatever reason why, somebody, I looked at it and go, oh, these button, this button is for the, that one, and this button's for that one, but that's not how the machine works. So we're fiddling around with it. Call up the guy, Eric, at the Henry's, and he's not going to show up. I go, I want my coffee! So I looked at it, and I go, oh! And so then we the surely hit the button, run. Sure enough. We unplugged it, plugged it in, nothing. We hit the, hit the button, run. And king, things started to moving. Oh, I think we got coffee. She hits the water, we got water. She hits the coffee button, we got coffee. But it's like water, more coffee. So I'll get, let some time go by. So I'll let five minutes go by, come over. Oh, I got some coffee. Five more minutes go by, and the green light went on. We are in the race. We got coffee. That's the first time I ever felt like, oh, I needed coffee. Why do I say that? Here we go. Ready? And I brought my cuff, and so I use a cup now. Uh, Dennis, here you go. Ready? Stay there and wait. Ready? This is why I bring up the story. Can I have coffee? Don't do anything. Just do Can I have coffee? Is there coffee here? No. Dennis, come on up. Come on up. Stand there and hold out that cup. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's no coffee in the cup now, so we don't spill it. Can I get coffee now? Yeah, I can get my coffee. Because there is a giver, now there's a gift. No giver, no gift. Same thing. Giver, he's got a gift. No giver. No gift. That's God. No God. No gift. No God. No love. No God. No joy. No God. No peace. No God. No hope. God. Present. Near. Close. He's got a gift. Do I have a gift over here? Not here. Do I have a gift over there? Yes, I do. 
Do I have a gift here? No. Do I have a gift up there? Yes. On Sundays when the Lord's Supper is served, I come up to the altar, God comes near to me, He opens His hand, and He gives me His gift. Forgiveness of sins, strengthening of faith, and promise of eternal life. Do I have a gift right here? Do I have a gift right here? Yeah. He opens His Word, and I read. Do I have that gift over here? Yes and no, but for the illustration, no. But I have it if that is here and here. But if I'm over here and I don't have the gift and the giver giving me his gift, I don't have anything. But if I have the gift and the giver in my life, whether I'm in the Word or not, if God is with me, He's the giver, and with His gift, He gives me His Word. So do I have to have the Word on me to be a believing Christian? No, it's in me. Because the giver is with me wherever I go. Wherever I go. Okay, sorry, I'll make you come with me. Ready? Come on. If I go over here, He's slowly with me. <laughs> If I go over here, he's with me. If I go over there, he's with me. Psalm 139, if I go up in the heavens, he's with me. If I go down the depths below, he's with me. If I stray away from him, I walk away from him. He, just stay there. I may not be with him as I turn my back on him, but he is with me. He is the shepherd that goes after me. When there's a giver present, there is a gift that he gives if he's not present, he's still present, but I'm not present to him. When I turn back to him, there he is. Thank you. You can sit down. Okay, ready? Okay, yeah, we got that point. Okay, ready? Coffee maker, is it present? Yep. Can we have coffee now? Yep. Unless... It was turned off. It was turned off. Can we turn God off? Barb says yes. I looked back. She usually sits right there. We got those two over there. No, you can't turn God off. Bob says yes, you can. What does life tell us? Can you turn God off? Have you turned God off in your life? Have you been just like somebody did, went over there and pushed the off button? It was running, it was on, on, but somebody pushed it to off. Do we turn off God in our lives? Oh, yes, we do. We turn off God all the time. I hope you're convicted by that, but lovingly convicted. You and I turn off God all the time in our lives. Now, every now and then, you and I turn back God, turn God back on. But it's really not us turning us Him on and off, but we do. Because He's always present, but we will push Him to off in our life. We have reasons, excuses, justifications for not reading His Word for not gathering together in the fellowship of believers, not receiving the Lord's Supper. And in essence, we turn God off. We're not any different than the people in the Bible, uh, in the Old Testament or the New Testament. In the New Testament, there's three examples, three of many, and one example is, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Why are you persecuting me? Paul didn't realize it, but when he was breathing out condemnation and hatred and murder, and he was going to where he was on the road to, uh, on, on the road to what? I forgot. Saul was on the road to Damascus. He was going there to, to take uh, Christians, believers of the way, and bring them to jail to have them killed. God's saying, why are you persecuting me? And he didn't realize it, but he was attacking God's church. It happens to this day. In our hearts and our minds, we may be attacking the church instead of building it up and protecting it and loving it and being a part of it. 
And then you have the disciples on the boat in the, in the storms of their life, in the late night storms in their life. They're on a boat, in a boat, winds in the wave, and there comes Jesus walking to them on the water, but they don't recognize he's Jesus. Ah, oh, it's a ghost! It's a ghost! But it was Jesus. Take courage, it's me. But in their fear, they're thinking it's Jesus. They mistook God in their lives as being a ghost. And their fear turned God's presence into something to even be feared more. Does God love us? Yes. Even when we turn away, walk away, and unplug Him? Yes. One more. Mary Magdalene, whom Jesus drove out seven, seven demons. Something drove her in her heart and mind on Easter morning to go to the tomb. And she wanted to anoint His dead body with with the other ladies, but when they got there, they're going, well, who's going to open the, roll the stone away? They look, the stone had been rolled away all wet, ready. She turns around and runs back and tells the disciples, they've taken the Lord. I don't know where they've taken them, but they've taken his body. Peter and John run to the tomb. They run to the tomb. They look in and says they believed and went away. Mary, she remains at the tomb crying and weeping and grieving. And she bends over, looks into the tomb, and there's two angels. And they say, dear woman, why are you crying? He's not here. He's risen from the grave. Go back and tell them he's alive. And she senses somebody coming near her. She turns around, and it's Jesus. But she doesn't recognize it's Jesus. She thinks he's the gardener. Sir, if you have taken his body away, and could you please go tell me where you put it, and I will go get it, please? And in her grief and sorrow, she thinks it's Jesus. She looks, but she doesn't realize and recognize it's Jesus. Her tears, her sorrow, her mindset gets in the way. Even though Jesus is present, she doesn't recognize him. And she looks at him and quickly turns away and goes, if you've taken him, please tell me so I can go get him and be near him, even if he's dead. But then, Joy comes in the morning. And Jesus, knowing what he needed to do with that dear woman, he just says one word. Mary. Mary. And this woman who is caught in her world of tears and grief. Huh? What? I can't explain what happened. I can only imagine that recal you know, if it was me with or without coffee, I'm recalculating. I heard Jesus' voice say my name. It can't be. I just saw him was crucified on the cross three days ago. I actually watched where they laid his body, but I just heard his name. Was it in my head? Am I my brain playing with me? What? And she turns back, it says, to see. And it is. And in that instant, joy, ever flooding present joy, it's Jesus, his face, it is him. My, my mind isn't playing tricks with me. This is Jesus. Rabbi, she bows down and holds his feet. Joy. Joy. That's joy. Jesus, he's alive, and he just said my name. I can't say anything else. That's the story of Jesus, of joy, of resurrection. 
good news, unexpected news that is beyond human understanding. That the one who is crucified is alive. And she is seeing him. He called her name. And he's alive. And, and not only is Jesus alive, but he is alive and well in her soul in her mind, in her heart. And now Jesus says, now nothing and no one will ever be able to take away your joy. Caring believers. Sharing joy. We just heard three examples of how Jesus was joy for people to believe. And, and not just to believe. See, this story isn't about information. This isn't about knowledge. Mary, Mary Magdalene isn't wrapped up in Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. You died on the cross to take away my sins. And I believe in you. Faith is by believing. And, and it's a gift of God. It's not by, so no one can boast. It's no mathematics here. This is relationship. She is now being transformed by her very being, Jesus in her heart, being a caring believer, and she's going to share her joy. She goes back, and they all thought she was crazy. He's alive! I've seen him! He's alive! And Easter wouldn't happen until later that night for those disciples, and then Thomas a week later. It's not about knowledge. It's not about information. G joy is about Jesus, he's alive. And so, I, I would like to have us talk about how this message relates to who we are, caring believers, what are we about, sharing joy. So what does this story, what does this message have to do with us being a caring believer? What does it have to do with us sharing joy? What's the impact? What's the hit? We'd, I'd like to get you guys into small groups of people. Maybe we won't do it today. Fine, because we're too spread out. <laughs> so, um, in Bible study, uh, or not Bible study, I'm not going to call it Bible study anymore. Adult fellowship hour. Adult fellowship hour. We're going to talk about that with a cup of coffee. God bless you with his presence. A gift always there because the giver is always there. May the gift of joy be yours in Jesus. And may God make you, create you, love you, heal you, restore you as a caring believer who can share joy. Amen? Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen.